The modern aircraft carrier stands as the ultimate projection of naval power, and nowhere is the contrast in maritime philosophy more evident than in the comparison between American and Chinese carriers. Today, we'll dive deep into these floating cities of steel, exploring their fundamental differences in technology, capability, and strategic doctrine. Let's begin with the backbone of these behemoths. The United States Navy's newest carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, displaces roughly 100,000 tons. In contrast, China's latest Type 003 Fujian displaces approximately 80,000 tons. But raw numbers only tell part of the story. The most striking technological difference lies in their launch systems. American carriers have revolutionized aircraft launching with the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS. Picture four 300-foot-long linear motors capable of accelerating aircraft from 0 to 170 Bonathaf in mere seconds. The system uses stored kinetic energy and converts it to electromagnetic force, delivering precise, controlled launches that reduce stress on airframes. The EMALS system represents a quantum leap over traditional steam catapults. Its digital control system can adjust the launch force for each aircraft type, from the lightweight F-35C to the heaviest E-2D Hawkeye. This precision reduces maintenance requirements by 30% and increases launch reliability by 25%. China's Fujian also employs electromagnetic catapults, making it their first carrier to break away from ski jump launches. However, the Chinese system, while similar in principle, operates at different power levels and reportedly faces integration challenges that the U.S. solved during the Ford's development phase. The radar suite differences highlight divergent design philosophies. American carriers employ the highly advanced ANSPY-6 radar system, an integrated network capable of simultaneously tracking air and surface threats while providing missile guidance. The system can track an object the size of a baseball at a distance of 50 kilometers. Chinese carriers utilize the Type 346A active electronically scanned array radar, which, while capable, operates on different frequency bands and prioritizes anti-ship missile defense. The Chinese system shows optimization for operating in the confined waters of the South China Sea and East China Sea. While American radars are designed for global blue water operations, the air wings of these carriers tell another fascinating story. A U.S. Ford-class carrier typically carries around 75 aircraft, including 4050 FA-18EF Super Hornets and F-35C Lightning IIs, 5-6EA-18G Growlers for electronic warfare, 4-5E-2D Hawkeyes for airborne early warning, and various helicopters for anti-submarine warfare and logistics. The Chinese Fujian's air wing is expected to include 40 J-15 fighters, 4-6 KJ-600 airborne early warning aircraft, and various Z-18 helicopters for multiple roles. The crucial difference lies not just in numbers but in capabilities. American carriers can launch and recover aircraft simultaneously, maintaining continuous operations. Chinese carriers, still mastering these complex operations, typically conduct sequential launch and recovery cycles. This brings us to perhaps the most fascinating aspect, how these carriers fit into their respective naval strategies. The U.S. Navy operates on a global power projection model. American carriers are designed to sail anywhere in the world's oceans, establishing sea control, and projecting power thousands of miles from home shores. They operate within carrier strike groups, surrounded by Aegis-equipped destroyers, cruisers, and nuclear submarines. Chinese carrier doctrine, however, focuses on what strategists call counter-intervention operations, or A2AD, anti-access area denial. Their carriers are optimized for defending China's maritime interests in the first and second island chains, particularly in scenarios involving Taiwan or South China Sea disputes. The operational experience gap remains significant. The U.S. Navy has been conducting carrier operations for over 100 years, accumulating millions of flight hours and countless lessons learned. Chinese naval aviation, while advancing rapidly, 
began carrier operations only in 2012 with the Leoning. This experience difference manifests in crucial areas. Flight deck operations efficiency, emergency procedures and safety protocols, integration with escort vessels, maintenance and logistics support, combat tactics development. Both nations are actively developing their carrier programs. The U.S. is incorporating lessons from the Ford class into future designs, focusing on advanced automation to reduce crew requirements, increased power generation for future weapons systems, enhanced cyber warfare capabilities, integration of unmanned systems. China's program shows clear evolution, moving from ski jump to catapult launches, developing more capable carrier-based aircraft, improving nuclear propulsion technology, expanding support vessel capabilities. The carrier comparison between these naval powers reflects more than just technical specifications. It represents fundamentally different approaches to maritime strategy. The U.S. The U.S. Navy operates on a global power projection model. American carriers are designed to sail anywhere in the world's oceans, establishing sea control and projecting power thousands of miles from home shores. They operate within carrier strike groups, surrounded by Aegis-equipped destroyers, cruisers, and nuclear submarines. Chinese carrier doctrine, however, focuses on what strategists call counter-intervention operations, or A2AD, anti-access area denial. Their carriers are optimized for defending China's maritime interests in the first and second island chains particularly in scenarios involving Taiwan or South China Sea disputes. The operational experience gap remains significant. The U.S. Navy has been conducting carrier operations for over 100 years, accumulating millions of flight hours and countless lessons learned. Chinese naval aviation, while advancing rapidly, began carrier operations only in 2012 with the Liaoning. The U.S. Navy operates on a global power projection model. American carriers are designed to sail anywhere in the world's oceans, establishing sea control and projecting power thousands of miles from home shores. They operate within carrier strike groups, surrounded by Aegis-equipped destroyers, cruisers, and nuclear submarines. Chinese carrier doctrine, however, focuses on what strategists call counter-intervention operations or A2AD, anti-access, area denial. Exact repeat of prior voice. Their carriers are optimized for defending China's maritime interests in the first and second island chains, particularly in scenarios involving Taiwan or South China Sea disputes. Exact repeat of prior voice. The operational experience gap remains significant. Exact repeat of prior voice. The U.S. Navy has been conducting carrier operations for over 100 years, accumulating millions of flight hours and countless lessons learned. Exact repeat of prior voice. Chinese naval aviation, while advancing rapidly, began carrier operations only in 2012 with the Liaoning. Exact repeat of prior voice. This experience difference manifests in crucial areas. Flight deck operations, efficiency, emergency procedures and safety protocols, integration with escort vessels, maintenance and logistics support, combat tactics development. Both nations are actively developing their carrier programs. The U.S. is incorporating lessons from the Ford class into future designs, focusing on advanced automation to reduce crew requirements, increased power generation for future weapon systems, enhanced cyber warfare capabilities, integration of unmanned systems. China's program shows clear evolution, moving from ski jump to catapult launches, developing more capable carrier-based aircraft, improving nuclear propulsion technology, expanding support vessel capabilities. The carrier comparison between these naval powers reflects more than just technical specifications. 
It represents fundamentally different approaches to maritime strategy. The U.S. The U.S. Navy operates on a global power projection model. American carriers are designed to sail anywhere in the world's oceans, establishing sea control and projecting power thousands of miles from home shores. They operate within carrier strike groups, surrounded by Aegis-equipped destroyers, cruisers, and nuclear submarines. Chinese carrier doctrine, however, focuses on what strategists call counter-intervention operations, or A2AD, anti-access, area denial. Their carriers are optimized for defending China's maritime interests in the first and second island chains, particularly in scenarios involving Taiwan or South China Sea disputes. The operational experience gap remains significant. The U.S. Navy has been conducting carrier operations for over 100 years, accumulating millions of flight hours and countless lessons learned. Chinese naval aviation, while advancing rapidly, began carrier operations only in 2012 with the Liaoning. This experience difference manifests in crucial areas, flight deck operations, efficiency, emergency procedures, and safety protocols, integration with escort vessels, maintenance and logistics support, combat tactics development. Both nations are actively developing their carrier programs. The U.S. is incorporating lessons from the Ford class into future designs, focusing on advanced automation to reduce crew requirements, increased power generation for future weapon systems, enhanced cyber warfare capabilities, integration of unmanned systems. China's program shows clear evolution, moving from ski jump to catapult launches, developing more capable carrier-based aircraft, improving nuclear propulsion technology, expanding support vessel capabilities. The carrier comparison between these naval powers reflects more than just technical specifications. It represents fundamentally different approaches to maritime strategy. The U.S. maintains global reach with its carriers as the centerpiece of worldwide power projection. China focuses on regional dominance and sea control within its near seas. As both nations continue to evolve their carrier programs, the technological gap may narrow, but the philosophical differences in their employment will likely persist. Understanding these differences is crucial for anyone studying modern naval strategy and the balance of power in the Indo-Pacific region. The future of carrier warfare will be shaped by these two different approaches, as both nations continue to adapt their vessels and strategies to meet the challenges of 21st century naval operations. What remains clear is that the aircraft carrier, whether American or Chinese, will remain a crucial element of maritime power projection for decades to come.